Okay. But I can show you how I set up oh, set up the animation. All right. Um, if you were wanting to do some stuff on the Malapoy, he should be already socketed in and ready to go. Okay. I think that that witch character that Elisa is making looks super cute. Yeah, this gonna be a lot of fun. What am I looking for? In here, this folder. Here we go. So first things. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the animation graph. I know it's pretty simple now, but I've worked with the engineers to get it that way. Um, oh my yeah, well, it's because the what's feeding into the location for IK isn't in the NMBP, so it's confused. So basically, what, what I have here is that event begin play, and I'm, you'll probably be able to... Ooh, I don't want to... I guess I shouldn't have done that. Whatever, check out... Uh, event begin play, I cast to the blueprint that hosts this character. I pull out of this custom animation blueprint. Um, and then I set a couple variables here, which are floats, like uh, sp uh, speed and turn value. And then I also get the hand attach socket from the BP as well. And it's, I put that into a vector location for wheel loc. If that blueprint wasn't bad, I could show you what I mean. Basically, I just made a socket. Actually, I could probably just do it here. No, it's not bad. I can show you. Don't worry. All right. I'm not worried. Uh, maybe in here? Here we go. <clears throat> Skeleton. So there's socket. There it is. Hand attached socket. F. Slow down. So, okay, so here's the socket. It's kind of off on... Uh, so as this wheel rotates, that socket will obviously follow, um, which is which is this. And then I'm basically getting that location and I'm feeding it into a vector location into my anim graph, which I can then use here for two bone IK in a second. Anyway, so I, I feed out of here, I get these this custom node and I feed it into this blend space. And that blend space is uh, character atoms. Uh, which is this, I believe. So it's very similar to the cart. Uh, basically, so on the left here, I have speed. On the right, I have turn. Turn is values negative 180 to 180. Speed is negative 100 to 100. And this basically is just saying, okay, is the character's animation going to be wanting to turn this way or turning this way? Or do you want him to be leaning forward because he's going backwards? Or do you want him to lean back because he's going forward real fast? Right. That's so, um, so, and if we match that with the cart blueprint here, it's kind of the same thing. Can I not show the skeleton? Is that a thing? Character bones? None? There we go. Sure. So it's the same thing for the cart. Uh, speed and turn. So as... As we turn, the car kind of turns like this. And you can tell that uh, the drive line kind of gets separated. Um, oh, yeah, I see. It's kind of just due to uh, some painting issues. But also, I don't know if anybody's going to notice that when the wheels are there. But it could be just a, a rigging issue. Okay. But it's not that big of a deal right now. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, we got left and right. And then we also got forward and backwards. And that matches up with the, the, blo the boy. So if we're going forwards, he's going to lean back. And then the cart's going to lean back like this. Um, if we hop back into my blueprint. So, yeah, so, and then I also have play rate. Play rate feeds into my blend space. Um, which feeds into here. Which I had done doing a play rate of three. And that play rate blend space where the heck it's like a value somewhere in here uh or not huh where did i get that value i don't know i think i probably could just expose oh ha right there i just exposed it there we go so yeah, so basically I have a float here called play rate. It goes into the blend space and makes this play. As you can tell here, it's pretty slow right now because I animated it super slow. Right. 
so that we could do time warping or something in the future. Sounds awesome. <laughs> um, okay, and then to make, uh, and then I I put put the an the animation blueprint into a cache. It's as simple as typing cache and feeding it into there. That's oh, that's so that I can then pull out of here. So you see Mallet Boy cache. Um, and now I have melee slot. Uh, I'll talk about slot in a second, but to do two bone IK, uh, it's, it's literally just called a two bone IK joint. Uh, and you have to make sure that you set, uh, like the, the, the space, the parent bone, uh, the float value in the target bone in the IK bone. You have to make sure that that the stuff kind of makes sense or else the IK is not going to work. Uh, you also need an effector location, which is like I was talking about that wheel location. Um, and what this is doing, this is overriding all the animation because this is the final animation output. If I had the two bone IK system maybe before this melee slot or before this stuff, this stuff would override the animation. So you, you kind of want to make sure that this is towards the end. Uh, and this slot is just how you play animation montages. So. Animation montages are just kind of like an instance of an animation. I don't really know how to explain it too well. But I have, this is the melee montage. So I've got, um, wow, the eye animation needs work. Who's seeing the eyes? Anyway, so in this montage, basically when you create a montage, you can grab animations from here and drag him into the scene like or maybe not what is going on why can't I do that weird okay let's just create a new one then animation montage let's select the mallet boy skeleton I click in here and I say hey grab this and Okay, that worked just fine. So here we go again. Here's this animation. <laughs> yeah, so um, you can do one uh, animation per montage if you want. You can also combine montages. So that's what I did here. So I'm going to delete this. So we're not using it. In this one, basically, I was able to drop in two animations. This is the left punch and then the right punch that I had, which is just a swing around. I don't know what else you can really do, um, but you have you can choose uh, Montage Section Manager and you create these notifies in here to um, specify like which one is left and which one is right so that inside of the in here you can go event graph and uh here we go so uh when when uh, uh like the attack left button is pressed uh you do play montage you specify the melee montage and you say a starting section left and that just matched up perfectly which one is these montages here yeah so oh uh oh so um I have these sections, and you do them here, like left, right. You can create new stuff and whatnot, and you specify where it is. It's basically just a notify, and that's what I'm doing here. When the attack left button is pressed, play montage, do the mallet melee montage, choose the left. Same thing with the right. The right button is pressed, do the right animation. And, there's, and then there's some extra logic in here to make sure that you can't uh, like push the button a thousand times in a second and completely freak the game out right. basically what I do is when uh When the button is pressed I turn can attack animation. I turn that off uh, and that's also a condition here, so uh, If can attack is true you come in here. I turn it off. I play the montage Then when the montage is completed see on completed I turn the animation that variable back on uh, this is so that like I said, if if that logic wasn't there, they could push it really fast and they would just look like he's shaking or something because it's constantly trying to restart the animation. So I made sure that the animation has to finish playing first. Okay. 
Uh, and and that's kind of, that's kind of like the whole gist of oh, but slot slot. I have to explain that. Um, in um, in the montage you make, if you're doing montage, uh, you can do a slot here or a group. So I have a melee slot, right? And I this um, montage is see right here default group melee slot. These animations are the melee left and the melee right are part of this melee slot. And uh, then in the anim VP, uh, you literally just search for a node called slot, I believe. Yeah, slot. Okay. Click on here and then you choose your slot. And this basically means that when an event has called that montage, uh, that montage will fire into here and it will look at all the slots that are made, right? Um, but only the one you have specified, which in this case I have melee, would be shown. Um, yeah, so and you can add more slots and I would imagine that it's pr more optimal to just have one animation mon montage file for a character and you just put it in different slots and stuff different groups uh and then you can just call that one <clears throat> that one character's montage and specify a specific slot specify a specific anim notify uh you can also have things loop in here forever um by going to montage section and if i click left and then i go pick next section and i go left basically what what that does now is that left is going to repeat forever uh which, which can be useful in some cases if you wanted something to loop um let's undo it hopefully there we go so maybe you want i don't know a, a gun to wiggle or something uh you can have an animation of that wiggle looping forever at when you play that montage on that thing and then you can just tell it to stop whenever you want and and this is also neat because you can go like you can keep choosing you can basically if you have a hundred different montages inside of this thing you can choose in which order they fire if that's something you wanted to do like here i've said left go to right right go back to left um you can even go like right go to right and so it'll start left and loop right so you can kind of customize how animations are played in montage. I didn't do that. I left it at zero zero so that you have to pick the notify you want, um, which worked pretty well in here because you could just specify which animations played okay. with having one montage. And you can also, if you want, you can have a hundred different montages for with one animation in it. Every tutorial I've seen on online, everybody makes a montage for every animation they want montaged rather than compiling it into one oh, montage gotcha. um and there's also other things like blend time just some other settings you want but uh oh. where are we yeah so basically i animate it from in maya bring it here i set up a blend space feed some variables into the blend space cache it put it into a slot or have a melee slot which i guess could be just an attack slot depending on the character this guy's kind of a melee dude right. uh and then i override the animation with two bone ik and you can you can blend this uh in and out with like some kind of lerp so i'm thinking if there was a way to activate if they pushed the button if there was a way to lerp this alpha off so that I could do like an actual nice right side swing and then lerp it back on to bring the wheel, the hand back to the wheel. However, I have zero experience with lerping. So I think I might just animate it with him like doing a really nice right side animation and then just say, hey, engineer, do this thing. <laughs> um, could you show me <clears throat> how you would? implement the new one the, the new attack that you just exported from my well i didn't export an attack oh, the, yeah, that, I... um 
yeah, I, I, I can show you. I'll just re-import uh, an animation in here. So I would go after I exported it. In, do you want to see how it's exported in Maya or just this end in Unreal? Uh, just do the whole thing, I guess. Yeah. yeah okay, just... sure, yes. Uh, let's go into Maya. Go away, go away. So once you've exported something, I grab the root and I go File, uh, Export Selection, and I specify it's an animation. And if it's not baked, you're going to want to bake it. Uh, however, baking it this way usually offsets the rotation by 90 degrees sometimes, and it's kind of weird. Uh, so you want to be consistent. If you're baking here, bake it here. If you're not, don't. Uh, I bake it in scene usually. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, so then I come in here, I name it, and then I just hit export selection. Make sure you're at FBX export as well. Uh, okay. If you were exporting blend shapes in the future, we'd be doing this but we're not doing blend shapes at the moment. Uh, and then in Unreal, you go File, uh, go into here, click Animations, pick an animation. Um, let's mallet void backwards right, open. Do you want to overwrite the existing asset? No. Okay, fine. I will export something else. I'll go... File, export selection, animations, test, and I'll go export, okay? And then I'll go import, I'll look for it, there it is, test, open. Okay, when this, this menu will pop up once you've chosen to um, export a specific thing. Uh, you, you, need to, you, need, you have to specify the certain skeleton. Um, However, if you're doing a, a thing where uh, multiple characters share the same skeleton, uh, you can do it that way, but you'd have to make sure that every character that is sharing the same skeleton has the exact same number of bones, and those bones are named exactly the same thing. And this can be useful for games probably like, I don't know, like RPGs, maybe even like Call of Duty, or NPC characters that are out in the back, right? And you want them all to have the same walking animation, right? right? They can all share that same walking animation because they all share the same skeleton. That's helpful. But uh, for these hero characters, they probably won't share the same skeleton. Right. Anyway, so I'm going to click Mallet Boy, and I usually don't touch anything here, but there it gives you some information on the FBX file you imported, um, and it gives you some information to set some translation and rotation just from the import um then there's also some other options in here which you really don't need to worry about it import meshes and bone hierarchy there was no mesh because i just exported the skeleton um yeah you can just hit import all okay. and here we go here's test <clears throat> and if i hit play here's that animation that i just exported do to do Boom. Um, and there's additive animation type. I don't don't play with that. Um, but yeah, this this is it. There's curves. If there's blend shapes, you could uh, add a curve, and then you could uh, what is H H? You could play with uh, you can actually play with the curve here. Add key. And I guess I need to go like so. If this was like a blend shape. You could like activate a specific blend shape mid animation if you wanted. So that's that's a something you can do. Um, so if I'm trying to make like attack <clears throat> for Malboy, I don't want to do something like this basically. To um, I wouldn't I wouldn't need to have the vehicle or basically is that? Yeah, you don't need the vehicle. Okay, and then that would just be. I would just need the call script added for this specific animation. What script are you talking about? Well, so if I was going to call my new an this new animation, for instance, like if this was something I made, um, mm -hmm. then I would need. Well, I just needed to to connect to a a button or something like that. So I would need some kind of um, script to activate this new animation, basically. Which is kind of what well, you're showing me with the blueprints and stuff like that, right? 
Well, yeah, uh, the engineers have already imported the attack left and the attack right. Right. Uh, and they get played here. So if you were doing something new, like like like, a, like an ultimate attack, yeah, right. then it, we'd have to talk to the engineers first, I guess. Totally. Make sure that they have it, because from the moment, th this is what they do. Temp triggers for attack. Oh, okay, it looks like they do have an ultimate key. That's good. So I guess you could just check if this bullying is true. You could launch an ultimate. <laughs> Um, but it, for for what it seems, I thought we were only doing kind of like three attacks, right, left, and an ultimate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So but yeah. an ability would be nice there as well, like a grenade or something. I don't know. Yeah, some kind of uh, yeah, some kind of ability. Sweet. Um, let's delete that. And then I guess I could show you. Oh, I can't. Shucks. Bad. Bad. Hmm. <laughs> they must be doing something with it. Yeah, most likely. Um, yeah, so... Sweet, man. That's it. If you have questions, let me know. Yeah, thanks for all your help, Josh. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Baka Bros Entertainment for more updates on our game development videos. And just remember, keep on developing, bros. Happy developing, bros.